Hello, this is Dr. Ney Paredes. I'm currently practicing orthodontics in Houston, Texas, USA. I graduated from UCLA orthodontic program last year. And today I'm presenting the following paper, pattern of the microimplant displacement during maxillary skeletal expander treatment, a convened compute tomography study. As introduction, we have that the mid-palatal suture and the syngroup maxillary sutures become more tortuous and interdigitated as we become older. We know that we have three main resistance for the rapid palatal expansion, which are the mid-palatal suture, the psychomatic patris bone, and the pterygopalatine suture. However, as we become older, there are more dental bulbar side effects and there are less true skeletal expansion effects. In adult patients, we have two treatment alternatives. We can either do a surgical assisted rapid palatal expansion, which is SARP, or we can do a mini screw assisted rapid palatal expansion that comes from the word MARP. The maxillary skeletal expander is one type of MARP. The MS is one type of MARP, which has uh, one of his main characteristics is that is more posterior position closer to the area of the zygomatic buttress bone and the pterygopalatine suture, and also is bicortically engaged through four microimplants. And as we know, there is a differential on the thickness of the palate in the anterior posterior level. And as a hypothesis, we could think that there might be a differential displacement pattern for between the anterior and posterior microimplants. So the aim of this study was to analyze that microimplant displacement pattern of the microimplants in the MSC. For material and methods that we, we have that this is a retrospective study at the University of California in Los Angeles, UCLA, 39 participants who were successfully treated with the MSC2. The mean age for these patients were of 18.2 plus minus 4.2 years with a maturation stage of CS8, 4 or higher. And those patients has no craniofacial anomaly or history of orthodontic treatment. One clinician supervised the treatment for all the patients at the section of orthodontics at UCLA. The CBC scans were obtained before treatment and within three weeks of completion of expansion. That's the C1T1 timeline. A CBCT scanner, Newton 5G, was used with a 18 by 16, 16 millicentimeters field of view with a 0 0.3 millimeters of voxel size. We assessed the maxillomandibular bone width discrepancy on CBCT scans, and we first identified the maxillary sagittal plane which passed through ANS, PNS, and nasion. We identified that on T0. This was, these were the following steps to determine the anterior posterior position of the jet screw and assess the bone thickness for the four micro implants. First, at the level of the upper dentition in the axial view, we move the green line anterior posteriorly until we find the maximum expression of the zygomatic buttress bone. Also, we have this orange line both in the axial and coronal view that represents the maxillary sagittal plane and also represents the sagittal center of the jack screw of the MSC expander. And now we have the green line that was representing the anterior posterior position of the jack screw. And then because we have four holes for the micro implants for the MSC expander, they were localizing a coordinates of five millimeters anterior posteriorly and three millimeters laterally. So we move this both the green line and the orange line through these four coordinates and we proceed to make some measurements that help us to determine the length of the micro implants, the length of the micro implant within the bone. For material and methods, we have also that these, uh, we perform a superimposition using the on-demand 3D software. Uh, we also uh, assess the extent of the suture opening at ANS and PNS, and we determine the anterior coronal microimplant section, the section that we have right here, down the right, that is going to help us to determine the different displacement pattern between the anterior and posterior microimplants.
These are the measurements that we use for this study, angular measurements, the intermicro implant angle that connects the two long axes of the two micro implants. The play angle was measured as the, at the point of convergence of the two hemi sections of the jack screw play. This is the play angle. The micro implant to hemi play angle was measured by connecting the long axis of the right or left micro implant to the respective hemi section of the jack screw plate. For linear measurements, we have like the inter micro implant neck distance. That this is this line, and we have the inter micro implant apical distance. Also, we find a ratio between the inter micro implant neck distance and the inter micro implant apical distance. And we also measure the bone thickness supporting the micro implants in the anterior and posterior areas for the right and the left side. We'll repeat all these measurements for the posterior micro implants. And then in terms of the statistical analysis, based on a previous study, the minimum sample size required to reveal significant changes after MSC was 14 patients. The power, we use a power of 0.85 at a value of 0.05, a mean difference of 1.0 for the lateral displacement of the psychomatic maxillary complex after expansion. This is based on a previous study. We assess metaphor reliability uh, by measuring uh, 10 randomly selected patients, and we repeat the measurements four weeks later by two raters. We perform some descriptive statistics, distribution tests, independent T and man weekly new tests. And also we perform some person correlation coefficient tests. For the results, we have that the average amount of MSC activation was 9.2 millimeters. On the first table, we have that when we compare the right and left anterior micro implant play angle, posterior micro implant play angle, anterior palatal thickness micro implant level and posterior thickness at the micro implant level, we found that there was no significant difference between the right and the left side. That's why we combined the right and the left side. And for these measurements, we have 78 sample size. For table two, we have the linear and angular measurements of the micro implants. And here we found significant difference between the anterior and posterior micro implant to play angle, being this angle higher for the posterior area. Also, we found significant difference in the inter micro implant apical distance, being these values also higher for the posterior area. And also we found significant difference for the posterior thickness at the micro implant level being these values higher on the anterior area than the posterior area. When we compare the palatal thickness at the micro implant level in the male and female participants, we found that the mean values of the male participants were higher than the mean values of the female participants in the anterior and posterior palatal thickness micro implant level. As discussion, we have that the maxillary skeletal expander is a unique type of MARP appliance that it has very important, it's very important to have the proper micro implant length. It's very important to have a proper bicortical engagement that is going to secure us a more superior and posterior skeletal expansion. And also it's important, it plays an important role, the anterior posterior position of the jack screw, which is at the level of the psychomatic battery spawn closer to the pterygopalatine sutures, and of course, in the middle or at the level of the mid-palatal suture in the mesiodistal position. We also know that the palatal bone is thicker anteriorly and tapers toward the PNS. Therefore, different displacement patterns between the anterior and posterior microimplants are anticipated after microimplants support and rapid maxillary expansion with MSC, and this is what we found on this study. It was demonstrated a um, translatory displacement pattern of the posterior micro implants and tipping displacement pattern of the anterior micro implants. In the coronal plane, the jack screw plate had bent slightly by 2.53 degrees with no difference between the anterior and posterior segments. 
The idea is that the jack screw is initially rigid to support the forces required to shift a mid pilot suture split. Once the expansion begins, the rigidity of the anterior and posterior guiding bars reduce and the central screw loosens, then the entire play bends as the zygomatic maxillary complex rotates. As conclusions, we have that despite the difference in displacement patterns, MSC produced a parallel expansion at the ANS and PNS and the anterior and posterior microimplant sites. The jet screw plate slightly bends during maxillary skeletal expansion. In the coronal plane, the posterior microimplants underwent predominantly translateral displacement, while anterior microimplants underwent predominantly tipping displacement. The palatal thickness of the anterior microimplant site was significantly greater than that at the posterior microimplant site, inducing the above patterns of displacement, and the palatal thickness was significantly higher among the male participants than among the female participants at both anterior and posterior microimplants. For further details, you can find this article in the Korean Journal of Orthodontics September 2023 issue. Thank you so much.